So let's talk about the film that started off the big disaster film craze of the 70s, Airport. Big D's entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings my fellow YouTubers and welcome to Big D's entertainment rankings and reviews. My name is Dual, better known to as the Big D. And this time around I bring to you a review of the 1970 air disaster drama flick Airport. Released by Universal, written and directed by George Sean, based on Arthur Haley's 1968 novel of the same name, starring Burke Lancaster and Dean Martin, plus an all-star cast. Yep, that includes Jacqueline Bissett, George Candy, Helen Hayes, Van Heflin, Jane Seberg... Maureen Stapleton, Barry Nelson, Lloyd Nolan, Dana Winter, and Barbara Hale. This was the film that started off the 1970s disaster film genre. Produced on a $10 million budget, it became a big success. It's about an airport manager trying to keep his airport open during a snowstorm while a suicide bomber plots to blow up a Boeing 707 airliner in flight. It takes place at fictional Lincoln International Airport near Chicago. And the film was a commercial success for Universal and surpassed Spartacus as the studio's biggest moneymaker. It also won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for Helen Hayes. In her role as an elderly stowaway, was nominated, and the film was nominated for nine other Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Cinematography, and Best Costume Design. So, let's go ahead and get started in our story. The Chicago area is paralyzed by a snowstorm affecting Lincoln International Airport, a TGA, that's Transglobal Airlines, Boeing 707 flight crew misjudged their turn from runway 29 onto the taxiway, becoming stuck in the snow and closing that runway. Airport manager Mel Bakersfield is forced to work overtime, causing tension with his wife Cindy. A divorce seems imminent as he nurtures a closer relationship with a co-worker, TGA customer relations agent Tanya Livingston. Vernon Demarest is a TGA captain scheduled to be the checkright captain for the airline to evaluate Captain Anson Harris during TGA Flight 2 to Rome. TGA's flagship international service named the Golden Argosy is being operated with a Boeing 707. Although Demarest is married to Bakersfield sister, Sarah, he is secretly having an affair with Gwen Megan, the, stu the chief stewardess on the flight, who informs him before takeoff that she is pregnant with his child. Bakersfield borrows TWA mechanic Joe Petroni to assist with moving TGA's disabled plane blocking runway 29, and Bakersfield and Tanya also deal with Ada Quonset, an elderly widow from San Diego who is is a habitual stowaway on various airlines. Demolition expert D A D excuse me Dio Guerrero down his luck and with a history of mental illness buys both a one way TGA ticket aboard TGA Fly Two and a large life insurance policy with the intent of committing suicide by blowing up the plane. He plans to set off a bomb in a attaché case. Attaché case, excuse me, while over the Atlantic Ocean, so that his wife Inez will collect the insurance money of two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, one which is one point five million today to us. His erratic behavior at the airport, including using his last cash to buy the insurance policy and mistaking a U.S. customers customs officer for an airline gate agent. Attracts airport officials' attention. And Nez finds a special delivery envelope from a travel agency and realizing Dio might be doing something desperate, goes to the airport to try to dissuade him. She informs airport officials that he had been fired from a construction job. 
for misplacing explosives and that the family's financial situation is dire. Ada Quonset manages to evade the TGA employee assigned to the task of putting her on a flight back to L.A. Enchanted by the idea of a trip to Rome, she takes... Well, well, talks her way past the gate agent, boards Flight 2, and happens to sit next to Guero. When Flight 2's crew is made aware of Guero's presence and possible intentions, they turn the plane back towards Chicago without informing the passengers. Once Ada is discovered, her help is enlisted by the crew to get to Guero's briefcase, but the ploy fails when a troublesome passenger interferes and returns the case to Guerrero. Demarest goes back to, into the passenger cabin and tries to persuade Guerrero not to trigger the bomb, informing him that his insurance policy has been nullified. Guerrero briefly moves to give Demarest the bomb, but just then another passenger exits the lavatory at the rear of the aircraft, and the same troublesome passenger yells out that Guerrero has the bomb. Guerrero runs into the lavatory and sets off the bomb, dying instantly and blowing a three-foot hole in the fuselage. Gwen, just outside the door, is injured in the explosion and subsequent explosive decompression, but the pilots retain control of the airplane. Now to the final act and ending. You know the procedure. You have five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box and fast below to avoid any spoilers. If you've seen the movie already, continue on. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. With all airports east of Chicago unusable due to bad weather, Flight 2 returns to Lincoln for an emergency landing. Due to the bomb damage, Demarest demands the airport's longest runway, Runway 29, which is still closed due to the stuck airliner. Bakersfield orders the plane to be pushed off the runway by snowplows, despite the costly damage they would do to it. Petroni, who is Taxi qualified on 707s has been trying to move the stuck aircraft in time for Demarest's damaged aircraft to land. By exceeding the 707's engine operating parameters, Petroleum frees the stuck jet without damage, allowing runway 29 to be reopened just in time for the crippled TGA Flight 2 to land. As the shaken passengers exit the plane, a hysterical Inez searches in vain for her dead husband. Demarest's wife sees him accompanying Gwen Stretcher as he says he'll go with her to the hospital. Bakersfield and Tanya leave together. Heading to her apartment for much-needed rest and breakfast. In a brief epilogue, Ada is enjoying her reward of fur free first-class travel on TGA, but as she arrives at the gate, she laments that it was much more fun the other way in the story. So, what did I think of Airport? Well, I will tell you that, though I've only seen this twice, I will say this was a pretty good movie. I recently watched it again on Tubi last month, if you've not seen my recent ranking of rewatches. But I will say this film became a big success and became one of the biggest hits of 1970. The film went on to make $128 million worldwide, most of it done well in the U.S. and Canada alone with $100 million. It got good response and why have you. Eventually, it became... Such an amazing big flick. I mean, it got nominated for numerous awards, it, including it for foregoing Globes, in which Maureen Stapleton won for Best Supporting Actress. Let's see, and Alfred Newman, who does the score, actually would later win the Grammy for Best Instr Instrumental Composition for the Airport Love Theme. Anyway, it was up for numerous awards. Now, I liked how we had a big all-star cast in my view. Most of the well, actors I wasn't too familiar with, but some I have seen before. 
like Burke Lancaster, Dean Martin, Helen Hayes, and of course George Kennedy, who would later go on to appear in three sequels to this, as a matter of fact. Yes, this film, again, was a big success for Universal. It went on to put out three more sequels, starting with Airports 1975 and 74. Which, I'll talk about the rest of the airport movies sometime down the road, if you want me to do that. Which, in case, I probably will. Uh, it might be a while, if I can find some stuff. But anyway, with a pretty good story... Um, and a good cast, a good director, well, good direction by George Sean, and a great score by Alfred Newman, who actually did some pretty good music for several movies. Can't remember what others he did. I know he did several others. So the question is, would I recommend Airport? I would say yes. Because if you're into the flicks that started off the disaster film genre, I mean... That would lead into other films like um, like The Poseidon Adventure, Earthquake, The Towering Inferno, which of course I will be reviewing that later on this month, and lots of others. I'd say Airport's right up your alley. You gotta check it out. So what are your thoughts on the airport? Please tell me what you thought about it in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel as well. Be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of a guilty pleasure of an anime feature that recently turned five not so long ago, Ratchet and Clank. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, you may want to check out some of these other reviews and what have you. In the upper right hand, left hand corner, excuse me, in the upper left hand corner is my review of a film that would be taken on the airport and disaster film craze scene airplane that I reviewed last month, or go to the upper right-hand corner for my review of, uh, uh, well, something even more cool and what have you, another big type of movie that I recently did a review of, which would be... Oh, crap. What would I... You know what? I'm sorry. Let me start all over. I'm going to try this again. Um, can you all excuse me for a moment? Thanks. Okay, sorry about that. Let me try this again. Go to the upper left-hand corner for my review of Airplane, or check out my review of, of Broken Arrow from 1996, which involves a, a cool jet plane and what have you. That I recently did not so long ago, this past year. Or go to the bottom left hand corner for my review of the major disappointment of a sci fi horror disaster flick, The Swarm. In the bottom right hand corner, is the button you can click to subscribe. I apologize for messing up the first time. Won't happen again. I hope. Anyway, click the button to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.